Changing Lanes, the official podcast of BMW. Welcome to this episode of Changing Lanes, the official podcast of BMW. My name is Jonathan. And my name is Sarah. And today on the podcast, we're answering frequently asked questions about the main driver assistance systems. Now, I know I've had a few when I first learned about it, and I'm sure you, our podcast listeners, have a question or two about driver assistance systems as well in the back of your mind. Yeah, and you know, I I have to confess to our podcast listeners, I don't have a particularly new car. And so my car does not have a lot of these driver assistance systems that nowadays ha- are becoming increasingly standard in a car. And it's mm. pretty remarkable just how much progress has been made, even just in the last two or three years, as far as the technology that's available to make driving safer, more convenient. And these things that were maybe just theoretical 10 years ago are happening now and are in cars driving on the roads today. So that's pretty, pretty exciting. Um, And in researching this podcast, we also just became aware of lots of things that have been there all along that we never really even thought about. Mm, Exactly. And, you know, I guess I never even realized that driver assistance systems, they were already a part of the driving experience from the beginning. I mean, I thought it was something new that we've never experienced before. But in actuality, when you think about it, like cruise control, right? Mm -hmm. That's a driver assistance system. So it doesn't seem as far-fetched and foreign as it once was. Driver assistance systems are here to help us stay safe, like you said, and give us sheer driving pleasure. So why not dive into it, right? Exactly. Okay, so let's just take a look at driver assistance systems in general. So Mm. as I said, they're already an indispensable component of many cars that are on the road today. And in the near future, we're going to see even more complex systems that are going to leave the task of driving less to the driver and actually more to the vehicle. Mm. And depending on the type of system and the stage of development, you know, Jonathan, active driver participation is going to be required less and less and someday probably not at all. Mm. So to calm your nerves and set your mind at ease, um, let's take a look at some of the most frequently asked questions when it comes to driver assistance systems. Awesome. Okay, so let's start things off nice and easy with our first question, and that is, what is a driver assistance system? Well, driver assistance systems, they relieve the driver of the task of driving. It offers more comfort and increased safety. And I know this sounds counterintuitive, but in the case of an emergency, a driver assistance system can actually take control of the car to keep you safe. But liability for the task of driving still always remains with the driver. Right. So currently, driver assistance systems act as a kind of practical support. For Mm. example, um, sensors capture information on speed limits or the distance to other vehicles and even lane markings. Um, Also, GPS and navigation system data feeds into the entire processing and Thanks to this data, audio signals or visual displays can then warn against potentially hazardous situations. Exactly. And there are already developed systems which not only warn you, but rather actively support you through vehicle management when needed or desired. So, for instance, some driver assistance systems, they break or accelerate, just like with cruise control, and they provide active steering impulses like during monotonous or critical driving situations. Now, this helps prevent accidents or can even relieve the driver. And there are other systems that help you when maneuvering or parking and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there are so many different kinds of driver assistance systems, mm-hmm. some of them are hill start assist or road sign recognition, steering and lane guidance assist, um, your favorite, Jonathan, cruise control. (laughs) There's also distance control, speed limit assist, lane change warning and lane change assist, and even parking assist, as we mentioned. And Mm. gosh, those are just just a few off the list. Yeah, I know. I know you mentioned it at the top of your list, Sarah, but I think some podcast listeners are intrigued 
how does Hill Start Assist even work? Okay, that's a good question. So we all know this situation well. You're driving up a hill, and just before the peak, you need to stop. When starting with a manual gearbox, you press the clutch, right? And you take your foot off the brake to accelerate. And then, Jonathan, what happens at that moment? I roll backwards. Exactly. You roll back. Well, with Hill Start Assist, or you can also just call it Start Assist, this will not happen. Mm. Because when the driver disengages the brake, the rear axle secures the vehicle for a short time. And when starting, the driver assistant releases this once more. Ah, okay. So I really could have needed that when I was driving up and down the hills of San Francisco a while back on vacation. Yes, that would have been very (laughs) helpful for sure. So the assistance system makes starting on extreme gradients or with an additional trailing load a lot easier. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So another driver assistance system is road sign recognition. But you may be wondering what that actually is. Well, Mm -hmm. (laughs) when you're in slow moving traffic, for example, it's sometimes difficult to have your full attention absolutely everywhere. The road layout, oncoming traffic, even speed restrictions, what's happening beside you and as well as behind you, a driver has to bear all of this stuff in mind. So road sign recognition relieves you from this stress with the help of a camera system which scans road signs and represents the process data on your display. And accordingly, the road signs are displayed directly on your screen. Often, this system is contained within other driver assistance systems such as the right-of-way warning, the wrong-way assistant, or even the speed limit info. Yeah, and the benefits for roadside recognition are so many. So one main benefit is that you can concentrate on the traffic better without having to constantly gaze at the forest of signposts. Mm. And just like with another driver assistance system, the emergency brake assist, the camera helps calculate distances and optimal braking time and can even give you a warning if you need to acknowledge the road signs or maybe even put on the brakes. So the camera is extremely helpful for a lot of reasons. So true, so true. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to stick to the speed limit, but when dodging through traffic, I got to admit, I don't always see the speed limit signs. See, exactly. And you know that the road sign recognition, that can really help you with that. Exactly. And help me not get a speeding ticket. <laughs> Uh, Yes. Okay. Up next, we have the question, how does steering and lane guidance assist provide support? Well, I wish all roads were wide and not so full of traffic. (laughs) I mean, but uh, especially in Berlin, that is not a reality. It's like congestion. We've got slow moving traffic. We've got construction sites with super narrow lanes. And I mean, this is just a reality, not just here, but in many places around Mm. the world. So this does mean that drivers have to maintain a steady hand and be very patient when following the road. And in situations like this, the steering and lane guidance assist can really help. Because even at high speeds, this assistance system can keep you right in the middle of your lane and just relieve you from steering. Because cameras detect the lane markings, and from there, the driver assistance system orientates to the boundary lines of the individual lane. You know, Sarah, I actually tried this out on a drive from Germany down to Spain recently. And yeah, I must admit, I was blown away at how accurate it was. Mm -hmm. I had my hands on the wheel for safety, of course, just in case something were to happen. But the steering and lane guidance assist made my journey a breeze. I was really impressed. Cool. Well, that's what it was meant to do. It's Mm. supposed to make long journeys a lot more comfortable. Exactly. Now on to a favorite of mine, cruise control. Yes, your favorite, (laughs) cruise control. (laughs) So the question that comes up most is, in what way does cruise control make driving easier? Well, cruise control, also known as speed control, allows you to select your desired cruising speed. And once you activate it, the driver assistance system constantly maintains your chosen speed, and it also offers enhanced comfort during long distances. Cruise control can electronically adjust the speed to the surroundings, and it can also appropriately adjust the engine power as well. Yeah, one huge benefit of cruise control is that it makes long journeys more relaxing. You know, your right foot isn't cramping from pressing on the pedal the entire time, and you can just 
focus more on the traffic. Exactly. And, you know, one more thing about cruise control, my favorite, is the combination of cruise control and road sign recognition, which is what we spoke about before. It has also created another driver assistance system called Speed Limit Assist. So, you know, as you can see, cruise control has a variety of ways to help you when you're on the road. Yeah, but what about distance control? You know, that's also tied to cruise control, but it can also help you keep your distance to the car in front of you. Mm. So this distance control is also called adaptive cruise control. And with a preset desired speed, this driver assistance system orientates to the vehicle ahead of it, and it automatically brakes or accelerates depending on the distance from the leading car in front. And you know, Jonathan, this system has already been integrated into lots of uh, modern vehicles, so the ones coming out now. And if you find yourself in stop and start traffic, the distance control takes over braking and startup. Great. And above all, you can use distance control during long journeys in combination with cruise control in order to arrive at your destination much more relaxed. And plus, it's not as much of a strain on your legs as you don't need to be constantly pushing the brake pedal. Besides comfort, distance control also provides greater safety during the journey. Yeah. And Jonathan, another frequently asked question about driver assistance systems is how does a lane change warning work? Mm. And why do we need to use a lane change assistant? Well, the lane change warning can help you to safely execute a lane change, as the name would suggest. But (laughs) It also supports the view in the rear view mirror and also over the shoulder. You know, Jonathan, I'm always extra careful when changing lanes because you never know if a car will be in your blind spot. So it's really Mm. like I I always feel slightly nervous, um, especially, you know, on the Autobahn in Germany when things are happening really fast. You know, it's so hard to know if in that second that you want to switch lanes that there's another car in your blind spot. Exactly. And, you know, the lane change assist helps with that. Sensors, they monitor the area besides and behind your car, and they cover that notorious blind spot like you're talking about. And if another car does approach your vehicle in the blind spot or is dangerously close and is overlooked by the driver, the driver assistant recognizes this and warns against changing lanes. So this warning is made by using flashing symbols in the side mirror and even with a steering wheel vibration or steering impulses. And a further development is a lane change assist. So this means that you can change lanes automatically once you've set the indicator for a few seconds. And in doing so, the system assesses whether there is another vehicle in the blind spot or dangerously close and only changes the lane as long as the sensors do not detect a hazard. This is really cool. You know, mm. it helps with additional protection for road users. But, you know, it definitely should not be a 100% replacement for the rear and side mirrors or simply glancing over your shoulder. I mean, we still Mm. have to do that, you know. This driver's assistance system can maybe help avoid accidents, but at the end of the day, the driver nevertheless must pay full attention when changing lanes. You can say that again, most definitely. Okay, and last but not least of our frequently asked questions on driver assistance systems is, you guessed it, Park Assist. And (laughs) the question is, what advantages does Parking Assist offer? And here's the answer. Parking assistants support you when maneuvering or parking and will help protect you from parking damage. Very handy in crowded cities when parking spaces are always a little bit too small, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like it's always a tiny bit too small. (laughs) Now, the range extends from systems with a warning function to systems which display the surroundings or automatically carry out the entire parking process. That would be a dream. Wow. I don't don't have that, but I mean, we at (laughs) least have the the warning that beep, 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 if you're getting too close. Exactly. And These systems make use of ultrasound and camera sensor data, and the park pilot indicates the distance to surrounding objects and in this way supports the drive mainly through the use of beep, 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 those beeping sounds. Exactly. Just like that. The beep, beep, beep. We all Mm -hmm. know it. Yeah. 
Um, a rear view camera, of course, is even more detailed. Additionally, that displays the area behind the car and adds in suggested lines, which can provide some guidance when parking. And some further developments, some newer things, um, is when the driver assistance systems can completely take over the parking process wow. and independently carry out all the required steering maneuvers as well as braking and acceleration. I mean, that's when we're moving into autonomous driving. Mm. Like I said, my car is not that new, so I don't have that. <laughs> um, but what a dream that would be. I mean, just getting in and out of the super tight parking spots can just now be taken care of with the touch of a button. Fantastic. Now, parking in that one parking spot that you're not 100% confident about, that's no longer a challenge. And the comfort and advantages of self-parking vehicles are tenfold. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You know, Jonathan, these assistance systems that we talked about they only offer a small preview of the aim in which many manufacturers are striving towards in the future. I mentioned it already. Mm -hmm. Autonomous driving, right? Exactly. Yeah. You know, like all of these various driver assistance systems, they're really building the bridge towards the world of autonomous driving. And I'm telling you, Jonathan, it's really not that far away. No, I don't think so either. Um, mm -hmm. We even did a deep dive into autonomous driving as a podcast in episode number two. So feel free to check that one out after listening to this one. Yep. If you like this podcast, you're definitely going to love the one on autonomous driving. Most definitely. And that's a wrap. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of Changing Lanes. And as we said, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you subscribe to our podcast for all the future episodes. And to dive deeper into all things BMW, head on over to BMW.com to learn more. My name is Sarah. And I'm Jonathan. And this has been Changing Lanes. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.